Okay, we can start. Namaste. Yes, sir. Good morning. Ohayo Zaymas. Ohayo Zaymas. There is a little bit of a problem with my internet connection. No problem, Sanila Sensei. Welcome, <laughs> everyone. So, today is lecture four of International Day of Yoga, Yoga Mahotsav 2, 75 days. And without taking much more time, I would like to invite. Sanlila Sensei, Sanlila Sensei has done yoga last uh, yoga mahotsav also and this time also. So she is going to give lecture about uh, she say yo is say yo is life. Very important. So Sanlila Sensei, Kadashko Negashimas. Kadashko Negashimas, Ohayo Guzaimas. So na hai ji kalbil na kita kuthik hunto yani kato guzaimas. My Japanese is little poor. Please bear with me. I will try to explain in very simple Japanese, but uh, mostly it will be in English. And uh, we will be recording this session. So uh, if you're comfortable with it, uh, we'll go ahead. And uh, the session today is about posture. Uh, good posture, better posture, would mean better or how you move, not just posture is not just about standing. Next slide, please. So as the title said, good posture, better movement, better life, better productivity. So here we're talking about what is a posture? Are we talking about postures that we take in yoga? Or is it something to do with our daily life? So as you all know, yoga is what the basic essence of yoga is uh, a posture or anything that you do mindfully or the way you hold your body, which is sukham asana, sukham staram asana. So that same thing goes for posture also. The posture is the way we move our body when we're standing, the way we move our body when we're sitting 
or how we are walking. So every little thing that you're doing every day in your life, it keeps building up some issues within our body. Next slide, please. So the, our body is basically made for movement. We are not meant for sitting for a long time. And there are seven basic movements our body can make. So can somebody tell me in the chat box, what are the seven basic movements our body can make? Anybody? Give a guess. It's, it's fine. We are all learning here. Like uh, walking, Toka? Yes, walking is one movement. Otherwise, other, any other? Walking and running is same or different? Bending, that should be very nice. Bend, bend. Sitting down, very good. Walking and running, we'll put it in gait. Okay. Twisting. Twisting. Okay. Our spine, yeah. Our spine is meant for forward bending, backward bending, side bending, both sides, and also twisting. So I'll come to that very important part, twisting and bending. We'll come to it later. So <clears throat> these are, next slide please, these are the seven basic movements. That is pull, push. We are, every time we are opening the door, we are pulling it. Every time we are taking a chair to sit, we are pulling it. We are pushing the door. Or we are pushing anything in the house. Squatting. We do a lot of squatting when we are bending, picking up things from the floor. Or when we are cleaning up. Even when we are picking up our children, we are squatting. We go to a, a grocery store. We are picking up something from the shelf. You're squatting to do that. Lunging. Hinging. Hinging is, uh, as you can see, there are seven movements. Like, uh, if you see the picture, so gait. Gait can be walking and running, as Ashutosh sir had said. Then squatting is bending the knees and hip down. Hip hinge. We're hinging from the hip. So every time... You are picking, even if you're sitting on a chair and you pick something from the floor, you're hinging. We are pushing uh, against the door, against the furniture. Uh, and lung lunging, as we said, sometimes we lunge down to pick up something. And we are twisting. So these pictures that you see are basically during the exercises, but... This is what we are doing every day in our life. Next slide, please. So now the question is, we are doing all these movements. We should be healthy. Why are we ending up with a poor posture? What is it in our day-to-day -day daily habits that is creating our tension in our shoulders, our shoulder blades, our back, our knees. What is it that is causing fatigue in our body? So as we get older, bad habits such as slouching on work, and this is something which none of us can avoid, you know. We all are sitting for long hours on the computer and especially in this uh, work from home scenario, we have prolonged hours of inactivity and we are sitting most of the time. We are traveling in a train for a, at any given time for 40 minutes to an hour. We, said we can't be moving around in the train. So we are in an inactivity, inactive, inertia state, in a state of inertia. And this constant sitting or slouching, we're looking at the phone our neck is hanging. We are in a bad posture. We're putting so much of pressure on this poor neck muscle, a tiny muscle in our neck. 
So this constant inactivity or constant abuse of your land, of your muscles is causing muscle fatigue. It is causing tension that ultimately again leads to poor posture. Next slide, please. Andrea, since what is launching? Uh, okay, I will co just come to that. Okay. Uh, so, slouching. If you see the slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Next slide. Okay. Next slide, please. This one. Yeah. Just. Okay, are we just going ahead with little slouching uh, posture correction? And I'll come back to the other slides. Mm -hmm. Slouching at work. So now, if I show you, you can see the picture also. If I show you, uh, I, I just, uh -huh. okay, this is your slouching at work. We are, if, the, if my table is in front, I'm slouching like this. I am straining my neck into the computer screen and looking at it. Even children. When they, a lot of children nowadays don't have an erect back. A, uh, the desks, and uh, I would say their desks are not meant for children. The children, the desks are very uncomfortable. And uh, for certain extent, parents should raise their voice to get comfortable desks and chairs for the children. And slouching at work. Now here, what you're seeing is a curved back, an arched back. And another thing that you would see is what we end up doing is either the chair is too high for us or the chair is too low for us. Another th problem we end up doing with while we're working in the computers, our elbows are hanging. They're not supported. So what my strain, my, my strain is on, on my wrist and on my back. Because my, the middle joint is hanging in between. It's not supported. So three things, if we go back to the previous slide while we're turning. So this is slouching at uh, work. And slouching at work poses a lot of work-life challenges. Like uh, it is bad for your shoulder blades. It is... Uh, bad for your wrists, bad for your neck muscles. And once, once the problem starts, even with your fingertips, how wide your computer board or how your, how your keyboard is, this starts at the fingertip and it radiates all the way down up to your neck. And the doctor may say, oh, you've got cervical, but where is that pain coming from? The pain is actually starting in your fingertip because we are not using our fingers enough. We are not, we are not exercising our fingers enough. We, we are putting our hands on the computer. That's creating problem. So, uh, as, I, as the slide says, the uh, posture problem is very pronounced. People who are sitting all day, there are, there are a lot of pe old people who, uh, because of their age or because of uh, not being able to go out anywhere, they are sitting on the couches and watching television all day. There is not enough activity. So bad habits plus work-life balance. This creates problem in our life. So uh, next slide, please. Some of the bad examples of a bad posture is that you are slouching. As I said, you're slouching and you're working like this. Our body is not meant to be bent like this. Another problem that we might end up with is the way we stand. A lot of people have this habit of 
either their bums are out. They're standing like this because heavy hip. Or sometimes, particularly women after pregnancy, women after pregnancy, the stomach is there, they end up standing like this. And that becomes a permanent posture. So the arch in your back, a natural arch in your back, becomes more pronounced. Tall people, tall people because as the child is getting taller and is taller than again, uh, taller, uh, the tallest child in the child in the class, what they end up doing is because they want, they don't want to look tall, they slouch like this. There is a bump in the upper back area. And again, some people have a gait like this. So that is, again, um, a lot of us unconsciously, subconsciously end up standing with just on one foot. We have a favorite, we all of us have a favorite foot. We stand like this. We don't even realize but we are standing in one. Okay. Another problem is when you're sitting, many, I, I, uh, I, I've seen men, a lot of men, using a big wallet and putting it in the back pocket. So now what happens is if I put a if I put a two inches or a two even a two centimeter wallet, two centimeter wallet on my hip and when I step down, my hip is imbalanced. That even one centimeter, less than a one centimeter imbalance creates stress in your hip area and hip mind you core this part is one of the largest muscle in our body and it is that is where we are getting the balance in the body if my hip is tilted a little bit if i'm standing with my feet on my favorite leg i'm putting strain on one side of my body i'm putting strain and a i've started an imbalance in my back in my tailbone, in my spine, as to, I'm putting pressure on my knee, on one knee, I'm putting pressure on one ankle. So that imbalance has started the way you sit. A um, lot of us women have been taught to sit like a lady with legs tucked in, knees, uh, feet tucked in. If I may show you, are we tucked in or we have the habit of sitting like this with one leg on top of another one. Again, you are creating an imbalance in your hip. If you're sitting with your feet tucked in, you're creating that acute angle in your knee. And that acute angle on the knee creates a stress a constant stress. See, if you sit for a moment or two or five minutes, it's not a problem. But I want to sit like this for an hour, it is creating a problem in my knee joint. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. So this is the picture for slouching at work. Okay, now, slouching at work, how can I avoid it? Few things that we want to take care of. I'm sorry, I'll keep moving and I might go out of the focus. Don't mind with that. Okay, first thing first, in your office, use a thing known as office ergonomics. That is, desks and chair which are comfortable for your body. In office chair, all of us have, <clears throat> we can raise the height of the chair or decreases, decrease it. But if that is not possible, then use a cushion. The height of the chair should be along with your knee. It shouldn't be lower. When you sit down, when you sit down, your feet should rest comfortably on the floor. 
your feet should rest comfortably on the floor. So your feet should rest comfortably on the floor. They shouldn't be hanging up or you shouldn't be sitting like this. The car seat, this car we are driving, we are on a highway, we are stuck in a highway for a very long time. Car, when you're driving, what you're doing is you're holding the steering and peering out of the windscreen like this. And where is the tension coming in? It's again building up in your back, in your shoulders. Optic nerves constantly looking at particular parts. We are not moving our eyes. Again, the tension which is building up in my eyes, my optic nerves, ends up in my neck. So, when you're sitting in a car, when you're sitting on a desk, make sure it is knee high. Bucket seats in the car are very, very bad for our body. Put a cushion or some kind of support at the back on the, in the car. Don't sit with your knees high and the hip lower than your knee. Knee shouldn't be high. Knee and hip should be at the same length, same height. <clears throat> when you're working in the office, if you don't have a chair support, arm support, if you don't have an arm support, in the office, place a cushion. Place a cushion in your lap, put your elbows, and then work. And if you cannot find a cushion, because sometimes we end up in an office, we can't carry a cushion all around with us all the time, can we? It's not possible to carry that. So make sure your table is large enough, wide enough, that you are able to put your elbow on, you're able to rest, not put rather, I would say, rest your elbows on the desk. Lot of people have, <clears throat> we have been told from our childhood that we should sit ramrod straight. It's not possible to sit ramrod straight for straight two, three hours. All of you check, when you sit down, check, Put your hands under your hip and you will find two pointy bones under you. That's your sit bones. So we are actually going to, now as you put your hand under your hip, you will see uh, two bones pointing in your hands. That, that is the little tiny uh, bones jutting out of your pelvic, the large pelvic bone. So now just start moving backward, slouch, backward, slouch, backward. The tailbone is moved forward. The sit bone, sorry, the sit bone has moved forward. And now start moving forward in that desk, in that posture, we are peering into the desk, into the computer and sit like this. Just release the hand. Sit like this. Now close your eyes, close your eyes, become more aware of your body and find out which part of my body is getting strained. Now slowly, again, take your back backward and let the sit bones move forward. Find out that place again, which is com getting compressed. Find out the bones, find out your body part that is getting compressed in this posture. One more time. Gently, just get your shoulders forward and feel that sit bone going backward. Your shoulders are ahead of your sit bones. And shoulders hunched, of course, slouch. 
Open your eyes. So now you realize that my sit bone is actually the right place to sit. I should be sitting on my sit bones. A, a small forward sit bone movement is fine. This movement is fine. But if I'm going to move my shoulders forward and my sit bone is behind and I'm slouching, I'm actually putting, putting pressure on the tiny cossex, the tiniest bone in our tail, or which we, in a normal language, we call tail bone. We're putting too much pressure on that. Now, again, from slouching, let's come to how slouching is affecting our life. I'm going to talk a little bit about this posture, slouching posture, because this is what we are doing in 23 hours of our life, apart from sleeping. In our most of our day, a working life condition, this is how we're sitting. So let's, now let's talk about this. So there is a compression at my tailbone. And there is a compression at the top of my bone, top of my spine. So my bottom of my spine and the top of my spine is compressed. And what does my spine do? Anybody? What is the function of my spine apart from holding my body straight? Ah, uh, Shikusha, I can't hear you. Maybe chakra, we have all chakra in spine. Yeah, so the chakra is like, we are not talking about like yogis, we are talking about like uh, average human being. <laughs> Yeah, chakras, you have come to this last point of chakras. But before that, what is happening? Yeah, it sends all kind of uh, sensation to our uh, brain. It's the yes, main part. It's sending all the messages to our brain. So now because it is compressed, the messages going into your brain is getting com compromised. Now, your spine is the one which carries oxygen or uh, blood into your brain. That is where the connection is. So now my brain is not getting enough oxygen because the blood supply is uh, hampered. Uh, in today's life, we all are wearing masks. So as it is, we are not getting enough oxygen in our lungs. We are getting brain fogging. We are getting fatigued faster. So now because the messaging, uh, messaging to the brain is getting compressed because of the spinal compression. I am in that constant slouching position and I am in a fight or flight mode. This is your fight and flight mode. But the moment I sit relaxed, chest open, I feel much better. Coming back to your organs in the torso area, what are the organs that are there? What are the organs, main organs in our body which are there in our torso area? And I'm slouching. I'm slouching. Anybody, what are the organs there? Stomach, lungs. Stomach, yes. So stomach is controlling my digestion. Anything else? Oh, come on. The most lot of organs here. What are the main organs are here? <laughs> All the main organs are here. Stomach and heart. Lung. heart. Lungs. Liver. So, kidney. Kidneys. Kidneys, liver. All our organs are here. So all the main organ which gives us energy, light, everything is here. Now, I have compressed it because of my constant slouching posture at my office. I'm compressing my abdomen. I'm compressing my stomach. My digestion is gone for a toss. I have a bad digestion. And I'm sitting. I'm not moving. So there is not meta enough metabolism in my body. There's not enough movement in my body for my that energy, which that fire, which should be created in my abdomen or in my that movement creates a fire in your stomach to function better. 
I'm not doing that. And in addition to that, I compressed my stomach. So my digestion is bad. I am slouching. My rib cage is getting compressed. My rib cage is getting compressed. I'll end up with a bad posture. That is the ultimate thing. Your lungs are compressed and not enough oxygen in my lung. My heart is compressed. My heart functioning gets bad. It's not pumping enough blood in my body. And not enough blood in my body, not enough oxygen in my body. Obviously, the body will get tired. That's why prolonged sitting tires our body and our mind. So now, how do I do? I have to work for 10 hours. Now, what do I do if I have to work for 10 hours? Next slide, please. <laughs> so then I just show you some pictures of uh, text neck while browsing on the mobile. This is a very, very bad posture. Please, people, when you're texting, don't use this posture. Your neck is a very tiny bone. The bone on which our head rests is a very tiny bone here. If you touch the base of your skull, it's a very tiny bone. And this head of ours is almost three and a half kgs. So if I'm putting, hanging my head like this and I'm, my elbows are not rested and I'm using my phone like this, Let's get that normal, and then that's, let's get a regular texting posture. Just looking at the phone like this. And my fingers and thumb is moving. I'm, I'm texting with my thumb all the time. So now I put my strain, so much of strain on my neck and my shoulder blades and my elbow and my fingertips. Best is roll your shoulders back. Lift your chin up. Elbows tucked into your abdomen and phone not down, up. Keep your phone here. Keep, if you don't find any armrest, please put your elbows close to your body. So that's another problem. <clears throat> Next slide. So some of the postural types. Sway back. Lumbar back, which in which sway back in which our shoulders are back and our hip is forward. In lumbar back, the hip is back and look at the arch in the, the curve in your spine. Then we have a pronounced hunchback in our upper uh, back area. And this is very, very pronounced in women. This is very pronounced in women. Mostly because being a woman, I can tell you that <clears throat> the go uh, our, our body is constructed like that. There's a lot of weight here. To support that weight, we end up slouching. We don't open our chest. We are either embarrassed, we end up <clears throat> with that slouch chest bent a little bit, not trying to get attention to a chest area. Again, we have forward head. A lot of us walk, a lot of young people think it's very cool to walk like this, the forward head uh, movement. And last one is, what is your good posture? So good posture wise, we have done good posture while sitting. We have to be a certain that there is a sit bone. So while we're sitting, we shouldn't be sitting on the tailbone. We should be sitting on the sit bone. Now comes the standing posture. Not hip out, not hip. Shoulders back and hip forward. No slouching. Lift, flip. Drop your shoulders down. Chin parallel to the ground. Chin parallel to the ground. Ear and shoulder aligned. My hands to the crease of my trousers. 
And lastly, not hanging or standing on one knee. Close your eyes. Just stand up, everybody. Stand up, everybody. Heel to heel, toe to toe. Heel to heel, toe to toe. Just move. Take your right foot out a little bit and stand a foot apart. Stand a foot apart. Close your eyes. Just stand comfortably, wherever, however you want to. Stand comfortably. Close your eyes. Lift, lift, drop your shoulders down. And now gently just observe which part are you standing on? Which leg are you standing on? Are you standing on your right leg? Or on your left leg? Subconsciously, all of us have a favorite leg. Just check. Are you the kind of person who stands more on the heel? Or are you pretty? Or do you feel more pressure on your toes area? So if you're putting too much pressure on your toes, that means you are a person which is which ends up sway back kind of a thing. Okay, now so, now gently. If you're standing more on your right side, shift your weight a little bit. And distribute that weight amongst both your feet. If you feel there's too much pressure on my heel, just gently forward. Distribute the weight between the whole foot. Your posture as you stand should be like, if I drop a ball from the head, it should land between my two feet. Every time you find yourself not standing correctly. Posture, bad posture we have learned, it's over the years of abuse. Now we have to relearn, we have to learn again and get into the habit of a good posture. So every time you're standing and you're finding, even when you're sitting, you know now which is my good posture. Just I'll put, correct yourself. Take a deep breath and get into a good posture. When you're standing, you start finding that I'm leaning more towards right leg. I'm leaning more towards left leg. Consciously make that effort to correct yourself. It, it is going to be a constant learning process. It's a relearning process. So we've already covered this part, uh, but we will just continue. We will just come, uh, go over it again. Next slide, please. So find negative effects of poor posture. We'd already covered it, but once more we will go because we end up with headaches. We end up with decreased... Uh, Confidence, because the way we are slouching, muscle tightness, decreased brain activity, because there's a poor blood flow and a poor oxygen flow. So we are not having a good brain activity. We get tired easily. We, we, are, uh, we don't remember things. We cannot concentrate. Okay, next slide, please. So, uh, okay, now how do we have good, good posture? I've just told you that good posture, we should, how we sit, how we move. <clears throat> That's uh, one important thing. Uh, standing, good postures, I told you about the sit bones, I've told you about how you should. So, standing, my head, chin tucked in, my chin shouldn't be jutting out, 
chin tuck them, my ear aligned with my shoulder, my shoulder aligned with my hip, my hands by my side and balanced on both legs. That's your good posture. Next slide. Okay, now I am going to work on my computer all my uh, all day long. I don't have a choice. I am going to be working. How can I still move my body? First thing you can do is, a lot of time while you're working on the computer, get a desk which is a little higher or get a stand on which you can put your laptop and stand and work. Don't sit for the whole day. For some part of your working life, working time, stand up and work. Some small exercises that we will do now is with the hands and the feet. I concentrate a lot of it on the legs, main joints, main joints of a body. I will concentrate on the uh, joint part. So starting with my toes, sit comfortably on your chair. Lift your toes up. Just the toes. Lift your toes up. <laughs> Lift your toes up. The ball of your foot and the heel of your foot is on the floor. Hold it there. Spread your toes wide. We are wearing shoes all the time. Again, we are just constraining our feet, our tarsal muscles. The small, tiny bones which are there in my foot, they are compressed all day long because we have very tight shoes. Particularly women, please don't wear pointy shoes. They look very fancy, but don't wear shoes that are pointy. They're very, very bad for your te uh, feet. They look smart, they look beautiful, but they are not. <laughs> they are not comfortable. Okay, release your toes. One more time. Lift your toes up and lift your toes, put your toes down. Lift your heel up. This is what we can do while we are sitting at work. And heel down. Lift your heel up and down. Lift your heel up and down. Stretch your leg forward and back. Left leg forward, stretch it. Stretch the quads, stretch your knee muscles, stretch your calf muscles, stretch your ankle and back. Stretch your right leg forward. Hold it there. Bring it back. Left leg forward. Bring it back. Slide, slide your right heel forward. Pull the toe towards you. Stretch your calf. Stretch the glute, the hamstrings. Bring it back. Left side. Stretch. Bring it back. Sideways. Stretch. We're working on the inner thigh and the outer thigh. Again, all these muscles are important to create that balance in our body. Bring it back. Left side. Bring it back. <clears throat> right leg forward. Left leg is bent at 90 degree. And hinging from the hip. Just hinge forward. And back. Inhale. Open your chest. Exhale. Hinge forward. Inhale, up, exhale, hinge forward. Change legs. Get your left leg forward. Heel out. Toes pulled towards you. Right leg resting at 90 degree. 
Inhale, exhale, hinge forward. Stretching our calf muscles, ankle muscles, and your hamstring. Take your right leg forward, right leg diagonally out. Hinge forward, bend towards your right leg. Come up. Left leg diagonally out. Hinge forward. Come back. Get your right knee up close to your chest. Hold it there. Get your left leg up, knee up, close to your chest. I'm pressing my abdomen, keeping my back straight. And I'm, use, I'm working on my calf, on my thigh muscles. All right. Gently lift your right leg up. Drop the knee out. Drop your knee out. Put your ankle on top of your left thigh. Inhale. Gently press the knee down. Inhale. 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 Press it down. Exhale, put it in towards your abdomen. Inhale, press it down. Inhale, take a deep breath in. Inhale, press it down. Exhale, pull it up. Use the side, the side muscle of your thigh, the abductors and the quads. Up and release. Both the hands on the knee. One hand, right hand on your right knee, left hand on the ankle. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Inch forward. Inhale. Come back. Let's go to the other side. Lift your light, left leg up. Gently drop the knee outward. External rotation of your knee. Lift your foot up. Place it gently on top of your right thigh. Inhale. Press it down. Opening the pelvic. We're using the muscles, which is... There's a set of muscles known as swas muscles, which is connecting our lower limb with our back. That constant sitting... Makes these swas muscles go to sleep. This constant sitting make your hip muscles go to sleep. Okay, I don't need to work. So there is a muscle amnesia. The, the more inactivity in your muscle, muscle forget to work. They say, okay, we, it's not our job to work. Only the brain will function. But the whole body has to function. Okay, inhale, press your knee down. Stretch those tiny muscles, schwas muscles, piriformis muscles, which is there in the crease of your thigh. Bring it up. Inhale, exhale, bring it up. Inhale, press it down. Inhale, press it down, down, down. Exhale, pull it up. Down, right hand on the ankle, left hand on the knee. Deep breath, exhale, hinge forward. Feel the stretch in your thigh and on your hip. Back straight, no slouching here, hinging from the hip. Come up, relax. This is some of the exercises that you can do while you're sitting. Now, when you're sitting, another bad posture, bad posture, bad posture that I mentioned was sitting like a lady with both the heel tucked inward. Put strain on your knees. Please, people, sit with your with a 90 degree angle in your leg. If you see it from sideways, 
ladies have been taught that good posture is like this. Especially British ladies, they would be sitting with the heel tucked in and hands. This is a bad posture for women. Don't do it. 90 degree. Make a 90 degree angle with your knee. Any angle which is below 90 degree is bad for your knee. Either when you're sitting, your leg, move it out. Or tuck it in. Uh, or make it into 90 degree. Don't, don't tuck it in. Don't tuck it in. Now I will come to the hinging part. Hinging part. Okay. Every time you're getting up from the chair, we what muscles we end up putting pressure on is on a knee. We are sitting here right into our seat and we'll get up right from here only. From here only. We're putting strain on the knee. Don't do that. Slide forward a little bit. I'm going to move a little faster now because I want to cover a few other uh, movements also. Slide forward. Release the thigh muscle here. Release the thigh muscle here. Sit at the edge of your seat. Please, stacking is very important. Stack your ankle and your knee on top of each other. Use both your joints. Don't use just your knee joint. Use these joints also together. Okay. So let's practice sitting and standing a little bit. Both the feet firmly on the floor. Press your feet down. As you press your feet down, automatically this muscle, a signal is sent into your hip that you need to get up. Press your hip, press your feet down. Press your feet down. Press your feet down. Feel, close your eyes. Press your feet down. Become aware of your own body movement. Which part of the muscle wants to work, want to start working up now? It's your hip. Get up. Sit down. One more time. Press your feet down. Press your feet down. And up. Bend the knees. Sit down. One more time. Let's just practice sitting and standing. So if you're using your ankles and your knees in coordination with each other, you will not get a lot of old women. They get, they are, their knees are paining when they get up. They will get up like this, putting pressure, putting hands on the knee. Don't do this, please. It puts too much pressure on the kneecap. Sitting for long hours, again, is your knees already compromised. Your, your glutes... Your hamstrings have gone off to sleep. And while we're after prolonged sitting and suddenly we decide to get up, we put too much of strain on our kneecap, on our knee muscles. Now slide forward a little bit, release this glute uh, hamstring area, stack your foot and your knee properly, and then get up. Exercise, use those tiny, small exercises which we just showed. Lifting your toe up, heel up, toe up, heel up. Move the, let the blood flow into your, the tiny movements that you, you make in your muscles, they activate the blood flow. If you're, you're just sitting without any movement in your leg, the blood flow in, the womb, uh, in your leg is compromised. Move your muscles, move your muscles. <clears throat> Coming again to your elbows, shoulder rotation, do shoulder rotation. You're sitting, put your elbows close to your abdomen, open, open your chest. Release, inhale, open your chest. These are few exercises that you can do while you're at your work. Inhale, just give yourself that two minutes, one minute, a break of every, after, after about one hour or 40 minutes, 
put an alarm in your phone and give yourself that five minutes body movement. Inhale, open your elbows. Exhale, close it in. Inhale, open. Elbows into my body, hands out. Exhale, release. Inhale, open. Exhale, release. Bring your hands shoulder level. Elbows close together. Open. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Flexion extension of your elbows. Stretch it forward and back. Stretch it forward and back. Open your elbows out. Stretch your arms, let the stretch begin in your armpit. Open it and just feel how good it feels to the whole body, starting from your fingertip all the way to your shoulder blade. Spread your wings, be ready to soar high. Release. How good it feels for your whole posture, whole body. Feels nice, doesn't it? All you need to do is just open your arms. Rotation of your wrist, very important. Because we are sitting on the computer, with our wrist is again in a very compromised position. And these are all very tiny bones. Small bones, small muscles, which we stop working. When we don't move them, they stop working and the more, more you don't move your muscles they become weaker the muscles will become weaker okay let's move our fingers how many can you do you make your own count and let me know honest answer very very honest answer how long can you do this without getting tired and I'm going to add one more movement to it I want you to Let's see how many circles can you make? How many circles can you make? And my, I'm opening and closing my I'm opening and closing my fingers. Remember, you have to open and close your fingers also. To open and close your fingers and make circles. How many circles can you make? Without getting tired. Without getting tired. Let me see how many. How many circles? Five, very nice. <laughs> okay. Who else? I think, I, are there some people who are still continuing with that? <laughs> See, it starts paining. The wrist and the muscle here has started to pain. <laughs> Why? Because we are on the computer keyboard all the time. We're not using our wrist and fingers properly so and texting of course texting all the time so we're just using this thumb the texter's thumb texter neck these are the new terms that we're coming up with and our muscles because we are not using this and it's the whole pain the pain the pain of the point of the pain starts here and it radiates up all the way to the shoulder. And now my personal experience, I'm a yoga teacher, I've been handling, I'm, uh, I basically do a lot of therapy work. As a yoga teacher, this awareness about posture helped me move my yoga practice a step ahead. I asked, I, I had a student who had been doing yoga with me for almost two years and she does uh, Dhanurasan with me and she starts complaining that because of yoga I ended up having a shoulder pain. No, it was not because of yoga. Yoga was just the trigger. What she is doing 23 hours in a day was more important. Poor yoga exercise, poor yoga is just one hour in one day. 24 hours, one hour yoga does it, is actually giving you benefit. It's how you're standing and working for the whole day is important. 
I started questioning her. I started questioning her how you're putting, I knew the kind of work that she was doing. I started questioning her what you're doing in the whole day, how you're moving your body in the whole day. And the culprit was what? She was holding a phone like this with her elbow, not supported. So she's putting strain in on her back, upper back, shoulders, her shoulder blades and, and her wrist. So obviously when she gets into a posture and instead of getting a posture, like, you know, opening the chest and going for your feet in Dhanurasan, she just pulled her hand. And this pulling that hand posture created a back pain or a shoulder pain. Lot of people now we are going to I just quickly come to squatting. Lot of people have this very bad habit of just bending down like this and picking up something. They just bend down. We have hip, knees, and ankle. Use all three. So when you're bending down to pick up something, if I have to pick up something. I don't just go down like this. This is putting strain on my back. You need to bend down, squat down. Bring that heavy thing close to your body. Make it that make that weight part of your body. Move it closer. Just don't lift it up. So many people. If I'm going to, this is a heavy table. This is a heavy table. This is a heavy table. I put a heavy table in front and I'm going to just lift it up here. Now, where is the strain? The strain is all on my upper back, on my low back area. But if I've squatted down, I've squatted down, I've moved it closer to my body, make it part of my body weight. And then I lift it up. If you see how I was picking up earlier and how I picked up now, you see the difference. One more time I will demonstrate. The, I have to pick up this table. I just bend down and pick it up. I put strain on my back, my low back area. The correct posture would be I squat down, bring it closer to me, Make it part of my own weight and lift. These, see, <laughs> I am just giving you some tips. You have to know best, you are the best judge of how you should move your body. You don't understand? Just close your eyes and listen to your body. The body will tell you this, uh, this is not the good posture for me. Please correct it. Oh, we are almost, almost closing time. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, quickly we'll go through the last few slides. Yes. So I how to have good posture, we have said. Yes. Okay, uh, let's go to this slide, which is uh, office ergonomics. Mm. So, uh, chair, I had mentioned, chair, I had mentioned that it should be uh, knee sh and hip should be aligned, or rather, a hip should be slightly above the knee, slightly a centimeter or two, but hip shouldn't be lower than the knee. Uh, get a keyboard and mouse, which are with a keypad with a pad in which you are able to support your uh, wrist, you're able to support your elbow, uh, get a monitor which is your, which is at the height of your eye. You don't have to bend down to look at the monitor. Some use a table, sometimes use a word, standing workstation. If you cannot raise the height of your table, get put a smaller, table on top of the bigger table and stand and work for some time.
And last but not the least, please come and see a professional. You have some backache, any pain which lasts more than two weeks or one, more than two weeks, you need to seek help from your profession, uh, from a professional. And take advice from a yoga teacher, take advice. And yoga, I would say, uh, we are trying to create awareness with these 75 lessons. But this is an ocean. And this is not that 75 days I've worked and rest 365 days I don't do work. It doesn't work. It's a commitment to your own body for a better health, for better productivity. We need to give ourselves that one hour in our life, even twice a week or thrice a week. This is the minimum we're asking, thrice a week. Please do some activity. Give yourself that time. I have a lot of people who are trying to say, no, I don't have time, but you have to make time for yourself. It is very, very important. Make time for yourself. Otherwise, we will have, end up with a very bad old age. <laughs> so for the sake of your old age, give yourself time in this young age. And I hope I've been able to create an awareness about your posture. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to me. So let's learn some yoga and some posture, posture movements. And let's move our body more. Thank you. Thank you, Shamrila Sanchadi. It was really very, 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 very informative. I yes. think we should do some uh, uh, in-person session or workshop for posture. So everyone will come and you can teach, okay, your posture is this good, this bad, this type of, like, I think. Yes, of course. We do it. Uh, Ashutu, sir, we don't realize it. Even our shoulders, I talked about legs, even our shoulders, we end up having imbalance in our shoulder. You take a picture, you ask somebody to take a picture and a casual this thing. Draw lines on your shoulder and your head mm -hmm. and just see for yourself. You, mm -hmm. We end up having a small incline, which, and especially women, because we have a habit of putting our shoulder bags, heavy shoulder bag mm -hmm. or computer bag on one shoulder. Mm -hmm. which is really bad for our, uh, for our uh, shoulder. And then because we, are const we have a bag on our shoulder, mm -hmm. it is pulling us down. And to compensate, we pull our shoulder up like this. Right, right, right. Again, this is putting pressure on your shoulder blades. And this whole thing comes into cervical, backache. Where are they coming from? They are coming from your posture. Right, right. Inactivity of your muscle. Right. The inactivity of muscle would lead into a uh, weak muscle. More you, more active your muscles are, the better blood flow is there in your muscle. Right. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank we, you so much. <laughs> we already overpassed the time, but uh, if anyone have any question, maybe we can do similar session one more time in this 75 days. I personally like this session very much. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Dhanashti here, Sensei. And it was a great session. And I would just like to add one thing, uh, which Sensei also, uh, two things actually, that joints are very important. ウォームアップしているかどうかは本当にわかりませんので、あとみんながどういうレベルかビギナーズ、インターミディエットアドバンスレベルどういうレベルかわかりませんので、先生たちは本当にみんな毎日ヨガを普通にやっている方なので、え
ただただ、えー、この柔軟性のない、えー、体でただただ手だけを引っ張ってこうしまうとこことか痛くなる可能性が高いなので本当にご自分の体と相談しながらというセリフが一番大事です。と私が感じてますあと、えー、先生私の先生もいつも、えー、教えていただいたところですけれど前屈する時はこう膝をまっすぐまっすぐって言われていますけどロックされちゃうと膝もとても大事な関節なので There is no need to stretch out many young girls also stand so straight It's not necessary. なんか普通の,その柔軟性がとてもソフトな柔軟性が必要ということなので、うん、体と相談しながらということそれだけをの言いたかったんですね。先生、本当にありがとうございました。Thank you so much. ありがとうございました。Thank you. Actually, I also have many questions. Maybe we can have in one more session. Let's, let's plan out. We have some surprise. No, sure. I don't have a problem. Yes. For yes. me, actually,、uh, for me,、uh, posture is very important because,、uh, I mean, Ashutosh,、uh, sir, if you talk to a doctor, they will come with,、uh, you know, oh, we get, I'm,、uh, ortho, especially orthopedic surgeons, oh, we get a lot of people with yoga injuries. No, right, it's right. not because of yoga. Yes, yes. It's not because of yoga. It's the 23 hours of wear and tear of the body. Yoga is just helping to improve it. Right. The 23 hours, how that person is moving the body, that is where the culprit is.、Mm -hmm. So,、yeah. whether you're running,、uh, next posture, I would want to even talk about gait. This will be the cover. It's okay. Today is okay. So I think <laughs> I have one more.、Uh, kenin, what I'm thinking is Koko Ego Zutto Dattan Deskedo, Nihongo Nakatan Desne. So maybe <laughs> we need to plan out because this content is very good actually. So Mata Kore Nihongo Fumete Choto Yaro Kanato Motte Masne. Minasan Kyomingatara Teagete Vasai. Akete Masne. Matana Vesa. Okay, so let's plan out. Kono Nanaju go Nishikan no Aidani. Yes, yes. No,、uh, I, I also felt the same. Nihongo no Setsume ga attara motto. Oh, no, 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 Sensei, it's not about you. We、about、didn't know us. that. We have、uh, thought about it. For the teachers who are English,、uh, going to speak just in English,、um, next time let's. Plan probably the same thing in Japanese, maybe. Right, right, right. Yeah, actually, actually the thing is when you start moving, when you start explaining the language, you end up using、yes. a language which you are so comfortable with, you know, because of course,、uh, otherwise it becomes a little difficult. Yeah, true. Right, right. But it was very important and, and interesting knowledge. <laughs> right. So let's plan out about that. So, Mina san, Tanun, Shiministe, Kudasai, Kono Seshno, Moikai, Nihongo de. あの入れてシャンギラ先生英語で喋って他の先生の方が日本語でなんとか頑張って皆さんに日本語でこの、えー、いい知識でグッドノレージを提供していきたいと思ってますね<笑>あちなみに誰か英語がわかる方日本,日本人の英語がわかる方がいれば一番ボランティアしたい時、えー、言っていただければと思いますねこういう時なんか普通の日本語でしたら私たちも、えー、通訳できますけれど、えー、特にテクニカルタームズね哲学、うん、あの,、yeah. あの Hello? Is anybody trying to talk? No, no, it's okay, it's okay. がいたらぜひぜひ教えていただければと思います。We need people who understand both the languages very much, especially、yeah. Japanese who understands English. Right, right. So, Shalo, thank you, thank you. Thank so, you that will be all for today's、uh, yoga session. And tomorrow, we have a special program. Gari mas,、uh, it's, it will be lecture or workshop. We have a special program. 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 See you tomorrow at seven o'clock. Mata Ashta, Shinjini, Aiwa Show. Arigato demas. Thank you. And yoi chichi, yori yoi chichi, so much to go.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shangila Sensei. Thank you. Thank you. You are on mute, Sangila Sensei. Itan kirimasne. <laughs>